this. Yeah. All right. Takes a minute to move forward here. Here we go. So part one is building your course. Imagine walking into a classroom with no chairs, no desks, and no whiteboard. That is what an empty course shell looks like. When you look at a blank course, it can be a bit intimidating. I want to share with you some quick tips and my own approach to how I build the course. Um, first of all, building a course that students don't stumble around and figuring out what to do in is really important. And I'll be stressing today how important it is to make things predictable for students so that they can concentrate on the learning, not figuring out what to do and why they're doing it. Once you get into the habit of prioritizing predictability, you'll find it easier for yourself too. Because um, you can be thinking about the reasons why you're doing things as you're putting things together for your course. High challenge for your students. You want them to be learning and using online learning use the online environment to help them learn as much or even more than the classroom. This really can be great for learning. And I always feel compelled to tell people that it doesn't have to be less than the classroom. It can actually sometimes be more than the classroom when you're working online because you can allow people different ways to do things um, in lots of different, um, with lots of different tools. However, Sometimes even the best designs can lead to issues. I don't know if any of you have ever created an assignment and had students take it in a completely different direction than you expected. I have. Students help teach us clarity. In Canvas, you can set up a course that seems so clear. And then you log in and see the students are all over the place, doing things in the wrong order, replying to discussions you thought you had published, turning in assignments and completely different answers than you thought you had asked for. And you may find your inbox full of questions you need to answer after that. The equivalent of raised hands and anxious faces in your classroom. I think I have made just about every mistake you can possibly make. So I speak from experience here. The good thing about online learning is you can adjust as you go. But avoiding confusion and focusing on predictability from the start is the best approach. So Canvas provides a lot of navigational options for faculty to use. Uh, they also provide an easy way to select and use only the ones that are needed for your course. So this is a picture actually of a Canvas, um, from, taken from inside of a Canvas classroom. Your default navigation settings can be easily adjusted by going to the settings tab located on the bottom left of every course. This tab is not visible to students. When you're using the modules format, and modules is a kind of a section or division in the course, everything will be in the module. So you don't need to confuse students with many of the options found here. You can simply drag and drop them down and then save your settings so that the student simply sees what they need. The modules, the syllabus, and the grades. So on the far right here, we can see the modules. And in the circle, we have the discussions, the quizzes, the assignments, the files, the pages. Everything is up inside the module, so you can just take all those out of your navigation. And in the settings tab, you can easily drag and drop, drag them down and take them out of sight. Um, all the little uh, eyes with a, a, a slash across them means the students don't see those because they're not, either they're not used or they're not there. So the student view here um, shows you what they see. And then the complete list shows the instructors all their options on the right. So I like to use, the home page is, um, Default, you have no choice but to have a home page. Then you have modules, the syllabus, RTC support syllabus we have at our school, um, grades and course evaluations, we also have those at our school. Um, our support syllabus is actually a link to um, our, from our website of all the campus and course campus policies and resources. And if you have something like that linked in your course, you can do that yourself if you want. Um, this allows for the course syllabus to focus on the course itself. So the support syllabus is campus-wide and the syllabus is your own course. Um, and then that helps the students to focus on what they need. Um, our course evaluations are also in Canvas. We started doing that a few years ago. So that everything is, that's associated with the course is in one place. 
Um, so that's just in, uh, how we do it at RTC. Um, and it helps fo students focus. I really, really love the modules um, format in Canvas. So if you want to start with the modules, you add a module with a plus sign on the upper right and you add assignments with the plus sign underneath them and you can create the titles for your assignments as you add them. Modules are like chapters in a book. Students start and finish each one as they learn. So you can, I like to work with weekly modules, week one, week two, but you can use topic modules or whatever makes sense for your course. The most important thing is clear labeling so that students can see what they're going to be about. The plus sign is what you use to add modules every single time. And you can add them and then move them around. You can delete them. Another great thing about online uh, format, you can kind of adjust as you go. Some tips for this, you can change the modules and assignment titles anytime. And you can move assignments to new modules easily. You think I wanna start with this? No wait, I wanna move it into week two. And you can move it up and down in Canvas. Any graded assignment is added to the grade book. So if an assignment, you've added an assignment and doesn't have any grade or points in it, it won't be in the student grade book. So you need to make sure you make it graded in some way. We'll talk about options for that in a minute in order for it to show up in the student grade book. And if you add a due date on an assignment, it puts it on the student's to-do list. So you need to make sure you add a due date if you want students to see it. And again, that can be adjusted. Um, but it does put it on their to-do list if you add that. Nothing is set in stone until a student has interacted with an assignment. So as soon as you publish an assignment and have a student, a student actually goes in and does it, even if you didn't, you didn't really want them to, you can't really, it's hard to delete that assignment because the canvas says, no, wait a minute, a student's been here. So you have to kind of move it down and put it in a, in a uh, separate module if you want to adjust it later. So these are all just tips for using modules. So I would always recommend working in unpublished steps. Look at the outside edges of Canvas when you wanna make changes. Um, I have a lot of faculty saying, I don't see it, I don't see it, where do I do this? And um, they're looking in the middle of the page where they might be expecting to see things, but in Canvas on the right side, on the left edges, that's where everything is. Um, and keep things unpublished while you're working on them. Unpublished is gray. So you can see at the very bottom, the discussion, students can't view it, it's gray on the right. Uh, so gray, students stay away, and green, content can and will be seen by your students. So the green check marks on the right means the students can, can view it. So the week one getting started is the um, module name, and then you have two assignments under it, hands-on theory practice number one, and then a discussion, guided practice discussion week one. So Paying attention to the gray and the green is really important um, and keep it gray until you absolutely need to use it. So remembering the edges again on the outside edges, um, you can uh, move things up and down on the, on the right. You can move the contents within the modules. You can move the module, you can delete it and you can duplicate it. Um, and we'll talk about sharing to commons in a minute and commons favorites in a minute. Um, but the outside edges is where you need to look. That's the main point here. On the left, the little dots on the far, far left, the little ellipses on the far left, that is what you would put your cursor on and move it down or up to move it around in the course. So just look to your edges and um, that's where you'll find everything when you're creating your modules. And then when you wanna make a change or edit an assignment, Again, you click on the edit button on the upper right and you save them at the bottom. Um, when you wanna save that thing that you've just edited so beautifully, don't forget to go to scroll down to the bottom. It might not be right there on the front of your page. You have to scroll down to the bottom and click save. So my rule of thumb is don't leave the page until you click save because um, I can't tell you how many times I've put together a wonderful assignment and you know, in edit mode and then navigate it away, Canvas will not stop you, um, unfortunately. So you need to make sure you save everything you're doing. Save as you go um, with all your little ideas as you're, as you're creating your assignment. And then you'll be, you'll be good to go with your modules. 
Part two, I want to talk about engaging your students. Um, so we've gone over the basics of building with modules and the importance of clarity and predictability. And when I say engage, again, I mean to find ways to meet them where they are, stretch their minds, connect learning with fun, keep them on track, and show them that you care. The syllabus um, is really important. And um, it's really important, especially now that we are welcoming in our syllabus. Uh, when you meet your students the first day of class in a regular classroom, you meet, with, you meet them with a smile. So when you meet them online, you need to find ways to make them feel that smile. So this is a sample of our college success syllabus uh, about, about being successful in college. It's so easy to add visuals in a Canvas syllabus, um, and it really helps students to feel the impact of your course, the meaning of your course with a, with a, few, a few visuals. Um, Student-friendly language. Note that the syllabus is a welcome, not a warning. I want to say that one more time. The syllabus is a welcome, not a warning. So, for example, we have the COVID considerations right now. You can actually call that out in your syllabus. We are in the midst of COVID-19 shelter in place, and I want to support you any way I can. If you're having difficulty completing work, please let me know so I can help you succeed. That does not say I do not I do not accept late assignments. It says, let me know and I'll help work with you. Um, so this kind of thing, especially in a stressful situation, acknowledging the stress can make students feel much more ready to succeed in your course. And also you can provide links to emergency resources. I know many of our campuses have set up lots of things to help students. So put some links in or guide them to where they might find help if they need it right there in your syllabus, um, along with all your descriptions of your course. So another thing I just discovered recently, and I don't know how long it's been there in the syllabus, <clears throat> is at the very, very bottom when you're in edit mode as a, as a teacher, you can unclick show course summary. Sometimes when students see a long list of assignments in the traditional Canvas syllabus, they can see all the assignments listed. And the idea was that students could see is trans about transparency. Students can see what they're going to do. But when you have a whole quarter's list of assignments listed below the syllabus, students start to panic. Sometimes they click on them and you don't want them to click on them yet. And no amount of don't worries will help with the panic that they feel. So um, I, I've started just uh, unclicking that show course summary at the bottom of a syllabus. Um, this is like, if you imagine seeing how many emails you're going to answer each day listed in front of you. It's better just to start in and step by step and see what comes your way. So I, 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 I find this is my new last week, starting last week, a new best practice that I've, I've incorporated into my own teaching is to unclick that show course summary at the bottom of the syllabus. So you can reuse and reuse assignment templates. And we have an example here of a tilted template. And tilted is transparency in teaching and learning. There are some um, templates for you to use at the end of this, um, at the end of this presentation. We're going to provide lots of links and in more information about tilted templates. But this one is the one we're using at RTC. You have on this page, you have the purpose. And having a purpose of an assignment can make a huge difference for students. Like every time you write an assignment, it can also help you. Why am I giving this assignment? How, how big or how little is it? What does it mean? Think about the context of your course. So you can have a simple statement, why we're doing this assignment is to help you build da 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 skills or this assignment da da da. So just put the purpose in there with a couple simple sentences. You can write the outcomes of the assignment. By completing this assignment, you will be able to and or you will build on. So having these kind of things right there for each assignment makes a huge difference and having templates to start with um, is, is helpful too. And then the instructions to complete this assignment and then adding tips for success. So this is a good way for you to add a few things for your students to help them succeed in your course um, in this assignment. And just even things like make sure you have, um, make sure you have uh, copied out something or make sure you have, have looked at the, the instructions from this assignment carefully. Um, give yourself enough time to do this assignment, things like that um, can help them a lot. So the tilted templates, I highly recommend. Um, we have some available for you to use and there's other ones available on the internet for you to use. Um, 
they're really useful for, um, for teaching in Canvas. So when you set up your assignments to make sure they fit your needs for your course, look at your course outcomes, uh, think about step-by-step -step activities to achieve them, and then create your assignments. Um, your goals for your students are your objectives leads to the outcomes, and your instruction is based on your objectives, which help the students to achieve the course outcomes. There are tips for measuring uh, measurable outcomes on our uh, resource page. So aligning your assignments with your course outcomes is, is a really great way to um, build your course. Think about what you want them to learn overall and then break down those outcomes into how that's going to happen. And then when you create your assignments, think about what kind of assignment you want your students to do. Canvas gives you lots of ways for your students to hand in assignments and participate in discussions. It's a good idea to consider all the pop possibilities when you're setting them up. So for example, note that a no submission assignment is handy when you're doing a hands-on observation. If you're out in the lab and looking at people, you can give them points and there's no submission, but you can give them points for doing something. Uh, online, on paper, and external tool. So this, it gives you all those options when you're setting up the assignment. Um, and in discussions, you can allow threaded replies. You can also allow, you can also insist that um, students post before they see other replies. So you don't want them just to say what everyone else is saying. <laughs> you, can, you can do that as well. So you can allow liking now, that's fairly new in Canvas. Um, so students can like their favorite posts. And then you can also sort, sort your discussions by likes. So there's lots of options for you to make it interesting when you're, um, when you're, when you're creating your assignments and discussions. Make effective use of quizzes. Where's my content? Well, that's interesting. Oh, I had to press a button. There it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So when you think people think of quizzes as testing, 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 but there's so many other ways to use quizzes. Um, so my tips are to use quizzes to guide the learning process. Canvas allows you to set up practice quizzes. And you can, when you're setting up the quiz, you can allow multiple attempts, you can allow unlimited attempts, and you can keep the highest score for your students. So they can practice vocabulary, they can practice um, important concepts uh, for, your, for your classes without feeling a lot of stress. So low stakes assessments um, can really help your students. You can do review quizzes. So students complete this before they move forward. So now that we're finishing this part of our, this module or this chapter, take this review quiz and then you must get, for example, eight out of 10 questions right before you move forward on the next part. So this really helps students to, helps you to monitor their learning and for themselves to monitor their learning. Um, and it helps them see quizzes as a learning tool themselves. You can do study quizzes. You can check important knowledge before a bigger test or demonstration. And you can do rubric quizzes. Make sure students have checked their work before handing it in. So for example, if you have a rubric for an assignment and it says you must do A, B, and C, make a little quiz before they hand in the assignment that says, did you do A? Yes, no. Did you do B? Yes, no. Did you do C? Yes, no. And if they haven't, say go back and do these things before you turn this assignment in. So quizzes can be a really useful tool in Canvas um, and it helps us to, um, to use low stakes assessment to in, um, keep the learning process active and inclusive. Another way to use a quiz is to get on the same page with your students. Um, it can be thought of as a let's make sure we're on the same page tool. Um, and you can make sure that learning is happening and that students can, um, can, can, can know that they're learning what they, what they, the students can feel that they're doing what you want them to do. So you have your syllabus and so often I hear people saying, my students didn't read my syllabus. My students aren't doing what I asked them to do. Make a little syllabus quiz. And this is a great, it could actually be an extra credit, extra credit, extra credit quiz. Um, in your in your in your in your course and this gets them off to a good start at the beginning of your course and everyone feels like they're on the same page another way to use a quiz is to create a student need survey um, 
Uh, so for example, do you have the, a computer? Do you have the equipment you need? Are you ready for this course? Do you have everything you need? Do you have a place to study? Have you set up your um, calendar so you're gonna have space to study in this course? You can do that right at the beginning of the course and, um, and see how students are doing. And you can use that more than once in your course to check in during the course um, to see how to see if students are really okay. This is especially important now during our COVID time. And you can use quizzes for extra credit assignments. Um, I like to do that because then students can feel like they're doing something pretty easy and getting some credit in the course. The other thing you can do with your assignments and your quizzes is to, to drop the lowest grade. So you can have it, all of your assignments set up. This is, this is not, excuse me, not a quiz. This is an assignment. And you can drop the lowest grade, um, lowest score and highest score. So you can um, set up your assignments so students can feel like they have a chance for success. They can still keep learning and um, they can um, not feel too much pressure to overachieve. They can feel the pressure just to achieve in your course. Canvas has lots of ways to, um, to communicate with students um, when, you're not, when you're not just giving them feedback on their, on their assignments. I can't tell you how important nudges are for online learning. Um, life happens. And unless you make the learning part of student lives, online courses can be like opening a microwave and seeing coffee sitting there that you forgot from yesterday. I mean, we, it can just be lost in the shuffle of life so easily. Uh, so you need to be that ding on the microwave. Hey, come back, come back, your coffee's ready. <laughs> you need to be the Alexa reminder. Don't take it personally if you're forgotten. You just need to keep, keep dinging and reminding students that you're there and the course needs some, um, needs some attention. So you can make announcements in your course very easily. Um, and the announcements tab allows you to reach all your students at once. And you can say, you can use them to um, tell students how great they're doing. You can go over um, um, assignments from last week. You can talk about what's coming up next week. You can talk about something that you noticed in the news that relates to your course you want everyone to know about. Um, so announcements are a really handy tool. Um, and people also, also use them to call out specific students. Like last week, so-and-so made a really great post in this discussion. Did everyone see it? And then rotate around and make sure you call out different students during the course. So let students feel recognized and appreciated with announcements. In the grade book, there is a message students who um, option at the very top of each and every assignment is a little drop down and it says message students who. And you can message students who haven't turned in the assignment yet and say, I'm looking for you. I'm hoping you're okay. I noticed you haven't turned in this assignment. And you can message groups of students this way very easily. Um, and it goes right into their inbox. You can also message students who are doing great. Hey, I noticed you did, you're, you're turning things in early. That's great. I see that. That's wonderful. And it helps keep them on track. I use this a lot uh, with my students, with my online students, both faculty and, um, and RTC students, to keep people rem reminded that they need to keep on track. Um, and I really like the way it, um, it just allows you to edit as needed. So you can change the default message from the default message is something like assignment missing, but you can, I always change mine to, I'm wondering if you're okay, where are you, you know, hoping you're all right. Um, so this is really, this is really useful for keeping students on track, on track. The other thing I've started using a lot recently is because, you know, a lot of us get tired of typing. Some people don't like to type that much, including our students. You can use uh, voice to text typing in Canvas. And it really, especially when you're giving feedback on assignments, you want to say a few comments to your students, you can use voice to text. So this makes the interaction with your students really easy. Um, and I highly recommend giving um, personal feedback to student assignments, not just points. And this helps them to see that you're looking, that they're recognized, and even something like that's a great job, and also noticing improvement much better than before. Um, I see you're really learning a lot. Things like that can really help, help students stay on track. So these interactions in Canvas are really great. And I've found, I've taught online for quite a while. I've actually developed some surprisingly personal experiences, personal relationships 
with students um, online, uh, even more than when I taught in the classroom, because students will write back and say, hey, thank you, or this saved me, or I, they appreciate and your, your efforts in keeping them on track. Um, so I think that you can really build relationships with students online um, in the online format um, without, without meeting them face to face. So use these tools to make relationships with your students and keep them on track. In Canvas, we do have a default homepage, um, and I really like to have a welcome, welcome page at the beginning. Um, the homepage is yours to create, and I've included some, several great photo sites with copyright-free photos for you to use at the end of this um, presentation. This one is from my favorite site. My current favorite site is called Unsplash, Unsplash. Um, and note that you can always change your homepage as needed. So after your initial welcome, you can switch to the Canvas modules, for example. Uh, it's a great excuse to make an announcement and tell students. This week, we switched to modules. Notice on your home page. So you can change it as you need it or as you like during the course. So um, the home page is, is, I feel like it's a really um, great aspect of Canvas. Not all LMS tools have this kind of um, possibility. And for our students, feeling welcome and, and feeling um, like they can come into a course with a welcome attitude makes a lot of, makes a lot of sense. I just thought of something I wanted to say and I immediately forgot it. So let me think for a second. Home page, select your Pelcom page. Oh, yes. So um, note that the mobile view in Canvas, many of the students will get the app and we'll use Canvas a lot from the mobile app. And it looks a little bit different than um, when you're, when the page, the, the computer view. So make sure you download the app and take a look at your course from the mobile view and you can see how it looks. It often looks surprisingly different. And we advise our students to use the mobile app to check their grades and announcements, but try not to use it for the complete course. However, data shows that many students are using their phones for to complete all their online learning. So be aware that your students might be seeing things differently and they might be on mobile and um, it's gonna look a little bit different from um, what, what you see in your own course. If you're using a computer, I'm assuming you're using a computer, maybe you're building your course on your phone. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. So know your resources in Canvas, know what you can go to to find information and material. Canvas Commons is in every single course um, in Canvas and all your courses on the left navigation tab. This is visible just to you, not to the students. And Canvas Commons is a learning repository from teachers. There's documents, courses, assignments, quizzes that people have shared out. And this is the, the new wonderful thing about 21st century teaching is that we're sharing. We're not just keeping our assignments and our ideas to ourselves. Teachers are helping other teachers. And there's a lot of information and there's a lot of things there for you to use. You can import it into your course. You can use all or part of what you want and you can um, and, and look for things and it's updated often. So I suggest going there often. You can import it right in. You can also share ideas of your own. And so you can put it into comments. You can share it with just yourself. Uh, we advise our faculty to use it as a repository of their old, old courses. They can just share it with themselves to be used later if they want to. You can share it with just your institution and you can share it with the world. So that's all up to you when you go into Commons and, um, and share a course. So I advise you to really look at Commons as a place to find material and um, share material. Canvas is a community of learners and teachers. There's a Canvas instructor guide that has all the answers you possibly can find, possibly have. Uh, it answers all your questions for you. And there's a Canvas student guide as well. Um, the Canvas course evaluation checklist, I'm putting all these links at the end in our document. This is, has been set up recently by some folks in our e-learning community in SBCTC. Uh, it's a great checklist for you to look at when you're setting up your course. And I've also included a link to our RTC Canvas for Faculty page. And we have lots of information there uh, for people who want to use Canvas. 
Um, <laughs> this is a shameless plug for one of our own courses here, uh, self-promotional ad. Uh, we recently updated our self-paced course on teaching online and are offering it to anyone interested in learning more. Um, I hope you consider taking it to boost your skills. Um, there's a lot of information in the course that I don't have time to share here, but we are offering it at $75 per course. rtc.edu keep learning is where you can find the information about the course and to sign up. So I just want to let everyone know that we have that available now. So in summary, um, Canvas is empowering. I hope you found some useful ideas on creating a fantastic course that will fit the needs of your students and reflect your enthusiasm for teaching. Um, some here are being put in the role of online teaching by circumstances beyond their control. I realize that. I think that with some of these basic concepts, you can turn lemons into lemonade and lead your students to meaningful online learning. It may actually be something you come to enjoy. I really hope it is. I really hope it is. Um, so we have sharing and resources links here. Uh, tip here is to join a Facebook group and there are lots of groups out there uh, of teachers. Pandemic Pedagogy Public Group is a great one I discovered a couple months ago. They have uh, um, educators from K-12 and, and upper higher ed in there with posting ideas and thoughts. And Faculty Learning Express is another group um, that actually I monitor. It has lots of ideas for, um, for teaching adults. So I would suggest you join either of those groups or either or both of those groups to get more ideas about teaching and using Canvas. Um, and we have a share your tips page here, add to a collaborative document, and we have resource links from the presentation. And also I'm on Twitter. Um, if any of you are on Twitter, let's follow each other because I follow educators and we share lots of great ideas. So uh, let's see, Q&A time. And I want to point out Q&A might not be understandable to some of our students. So questions and answers. <laughs> Anybody have any questions here? Yes, I can chime in, Liz, and give you some of the rundown of the questions so far. Okay. Um, are course evaluations a Canvas quiz? Actually, they're not. That's a good question. Are we, we're using a Qualtrics, which is an online survey. It's a paid online survey. Um, subscription that we have at RTC, um, but we use that campus wide, but you certainly could if you want, if you don't have a campus, um, if you don't have a campus wide evaluation you're using, using a Canvas quiz would be a really good idea. And you can make anonymous quizzes, so students, students don't have to put in who they are uh, with the Canvas quiz, you may as well, you set it up um, as a survey rather than a quiz. Okay, and there's a lot of, um need it sounds like for student engagement ideas um so that seems to be a theme so i, I shared some ideas here um and i'm glad to talk more about those with if anybody who wants to um but you know using using lots of uh, visuals and lots of um the, the tone i think is an important aspect of engagement the way you're talking to your students um so that they're they're looking at learning with you and learning with each other. I highly recommend discussions so the students can learn with and from each other as well as, as from you. So the course content is one thing and then finding ways and making really good discussion um, uh, topics is sort of a fine art, but don't just say, tell me three things you learned, but tell me three things you learned and how you're going to use it or tell me two things you, you don't like about this or finding ways for students to kind of interact with the material through the discussion format is a really good way to engage them. Also, students can not only type in the discussions and they can also voice type in their discussions. They can also just record their answers. So finding ways for students to record and use videos as well. So having students create images, make videos, um, and be part of the learning process through the creation, um, I think is really great for student engagement. Is there a way to text student phones in Canvas or just announcements and student emails? So when a student sets up their notifications, there's now a QR code for them to put it into their phone. So they can, um, they can have their announcements and everything coming to their phone, announcements and the messages coming to their phone. They have to choose that themselves when they set up their notifications. And that's up in the upper left in Canvas in the account section. The account section is 
your and your students personal area in Canvas and you can set up your notifications and they can set up their notifications to come to whatever email they want and also to the phone if they want to as well. Great. Is Canvas syllabus a template? The, the, cam, the yes. syllabus in there in yes. Canvas is that a template? Yes. So the, I, I, the, the public modules that are listed there have a syllabus, assignments, quizzes, all the tilted templates are in there. So yes, we do have a tilted syllabus template. Someone else asked, can you talk about the use of visuals in terms of accessibility? Oh, good point. So um, when, when Canvas, when you upload a visual to Canvas, you need to um, make it accessible, basically. So you need to either say it's a decorative image, and it needs to be, or you can put down, you need to put in uh, a description of the image. So you can add, easily add descriptions of the image into your Canvas course when you're using your visuals. And most of the sites, um, the free sites I list, I, I think all of them actually, they have a, an easy way to copy and paste in who the artist is for your visuals, so you can add that in um, right away. Perfect. Uh, do you have any ideas uh, for helping students get comfortable using Canvas? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. We have a getting started course and a, a Canvas tour course for students to see before they get going. It's the good thing is it's, it's fairly user friendly. So if you make your modules, you have everything we do, so it's very clear where to go and what to do next, that will help them a lot. Um, but um, giving them some practice, so you can start with some practice assignments in your course, um, practice discussion, call them practice and let them set, get going with that first um, and not be graded at all. So um, I think that would be one way to do it. Um, and if you don't have a, a week zero course at your college or you don't have a getting started course at your college, um, you might be able to find a way to make that happen. I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, that's true. They need to feel comfortable with Canvas. I've found that most of them feel comfortable fairly easily. Great. What is a uh, course activity stream? Oh, that has, um, that's my least favorite. <laughs> my least favorite front page. It just has um, basically a, a list of like things that are happening like um, it doesn't have a list of assignments per se. It just has um, the announcements. Uh, I can't even recall exactly. It's like a kind of like what's happening. It's supposed to be what's happening in your course, but it's kind of vague. So that's why I don't like it very much. And if you want to see what it would look like, you could look at the Canvas and faculty guide and see Canvas instructor guide. It'll show you what it looks like. Perfect. Someone asked, how do I use a PowerPoint presentation in Canvas? You can embed PowerPoints and um, uh, Google Decks, slide decks into Canvas. Um, and I think you have to go to the publish mode and then find the embed code and you can embed it into Canvas that way. Okay. And someone said, I had trouble seeing the calendar on the mobile course. Is that not available? See? That's the difference. I think it is available and I can't tell you where it is exactly right now. Um, it should be available certainly on the mobile version. Um, and maybe it's not available if you don't have anything set in there yet, but I think it should be visible. I can't tell you exactly where it is right now though. I'm sorry. I'm catching up with mobile. Yes. Totally. Yeah. And is there voice to text in Canvas? Yes. When you're giving feedback, you can click on a little button. And you can just, um, you can either record your voice itself or you can do voice to text. And um, recording, as a note, recording uh, your voice itself, people have said, I've heard recently that that makes a huge difference for students. They can hear your voice saying, hey, great job here or something. It really adds a lot. So easy to do and available. Someone wants to know where the button is for that. <laughs> so when you, when you get, when you're giving feedback to a student, like you click on, uh, uh, grade assignment to a student um, and you're in speed grader go to speed grader and click on the assignment and then you can you can find it from there it's not going to be in your grade book it's going to be from speed grader <laughs> and can you, you, yeah can you uh, can the instructor tell which students have accessed which modules you can see, yes, you can see through student analytics. When you click on the student's name and then it says student, uh, from the people tab, student's name, and then you can see analytics and you can see um, their part, what they've viewed courses, what they've viewed and what they've submitted from there. 
Uh, someone said, I can't seem to publish an assignment from the mobile app. Is that possible? Oh, you should be able to. Are you using the Canvas? If you're using the Canvas teacher app, you should be able to. Okay. Is a teacher then, app? Is a teacher app and a student app? And you should get both. <laughs> that was another question. So thank you. <laughs> and then someone says, um, I'm having trouble with the file links in the Canvas page that has your tilt templates. I can open the page, but when I try to open any files, it tells me I need to log in. Uh, what file links? Which say? Repeat the question. Um, so um, the the file links in the Canvas page that has the the tilt templates. Mm -hmm. uh, they can open the page, but when they go to open files, it tells them they need to log in. I will look at that. Thank you. I'll look at that. I'll correct it. And then um, how reliable is the Canvas app when it comes to receiving assignments, quizzes from students? I've encountered issues in the past. I have too. I, I don't recommend it. I mean, it's, it's all about, in, about connectivity. So if a student is using a phone somewhere in a coffee shop or you know, and with, with not a great connection or even in their home without a great connection and uh, their phone gets overloaded or whatever, it times out, um, it's, it, I, I think it's not terribly reliable. So that when a student, what I would say is when a student does submit, it says you have submitted. Congratulations, you submitted your assignment. If they don't see that, they didn't submit it. So make sure that they see that to know themselves that it got, it got uploaded or submitted. Okay, thank you. Let's see, I think there might be one other question. Is there a way to make a Canvas course competency-based? So, yes, um, you can set up, when you set up your assignments, you can make them discomplete, you can make them complete, incomplete. So students can, you know, if, they, if they've achieved it, they can go on to the next thing. If they haven't achieved it, they can't go on. You can set up modules. So in order to do module two, you have to complete module one. So that means if they've completed those competencies, they can go on to the next thing. Some students might move really quickly and then other students might take more time. So that would mean that you can make it adjustable for the students and how much they're able to do. So that is on the very upper edge on the modules. When you edit your module, you can put the um, put that uh, requirement that they do a previous module first. Great. Is there a way to organize pages? I'm not sure what you mean by organize. You can drag and drop them around. You can make them. I'm not sure what you mean by organized. I'm not sure either. Maybe someone can clarify that. Um, is the connectivity for all communication and the class itself through Canvas, how sim simple is that for students as compared to, say, Zoom? Oh, like for Canvas conferences or something? Um, I think it's, it must be about the same. I'm guessing about the same. I'm going to say about the same. Um, we do have Canvas conferences, which is kind of like Zoom within Canvas. And um, so it'd be part of what you have in your subscription, which is a good thing. Um, it doesn't show student faces, but you, it shows you talking and you have a whiteboard in there and students can interact, but um, it's a little bit different than Zoom that way, but it's a great way to have a conference with your students. I would guess that the connectivity thing is not gonna be much different. Okay. Um, would you be able to talk a little bit about the learning outcomes gradebook view? No. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I don't use that. We don't use it at RTC. Um, and there is information on Canvas about it, but there's a way to connect, like, especially K-12 educators have to connect their learning outcomes um, and show students progress in that. I think it must be a really great tool for people who are in that category. I don't know very much about it. Sorry. Can you talk about using... Um, uh, oh, I'm not familiar with that tool. Panato, 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 yeah. Panato in uh, Canvas. Yes, yeah, so Panopto is a way you can re do record your lectures and have them posted for students to see. Um, and it's, 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 it's within Canvas. It, with, if, you're working for, if you work for SBCTC colleges, we have it automatically integrated. I'm not sure about other places. I know there are people from high schools and things here. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if they have that in Canvas, but we all have it at, in, in our system. 
and it's a great tool to use to um, do short, of course, not long, uh, lectures or pieces of lectures for students to view later. And someone's asking if that tool is better than YouTube videos. YouTube is good because you can, and actually from your Panopto video, you can also upload that to YouTube if you want. The cautionary bit here is if you have students showing or talking in a video, you shouldn't use it in a different class later. Um, so it should be within that, only within that one class. YouTube, you can make a video and use it in multiple places over and over. Like you create your own video and use it in, across quarters, across classes. So I think it's really flexible that way. Uh, Panopto is more for the, that, that specific class you're working with. Great. And how are some ways that you use pages in addition to the home page? Uh, for explanation. So for example, if I have, if I want students to watch a, a video, for example, I don't just put the video link in Canvas. I put a page that says watch this video <laughs> or about this video and I, I put, I put in the video there. So pages I use a lot for explanations and for thoughts and ideas. Um, and if you set up your Canvas course so they have to view the pages, um, they can do it because sometimes students will skip those pages. You can set it up so students have to mark the page um, red. I read this at the very bottom. That's a new thing, fairly new in Canvas, or they can just view the page. Um, and you can also set up your Canvas course, on, again, on the upper very far right on modules. Um, if you set up the course so things are required in each module, the students get a little green check mark when they do that thing. And that's very highly satisfying for students. So I always, I always make everything required, quote unquote required. It might be just to view the page, but if you set it up so that students view it, then they can get a check mark um, when they've done that. So I use pages a lot just for information, adding any link or uh, resources and things like that. I don't just put them in as naked links in the course. I put them in pages with explanations. Great. I think that is all the questions that I see in the chat right now. So Lots of engagement, great to see. Yeah, so good. Everyone, we did record this session. We will be sharing it as well as the presentation slides. And as well, I will also share the link for the RTC course if you wanna continue your learning um, and Liz's contact information as well. So thank you so much for joining us everybody. today. I look forward to seeing your tips, people. Add your tips, please. <laughs> thank you so you much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Have a great day. Awesome.